Hello again and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and you're watching my version of Sculpt January 2019. And today's topic was hybrid. Uh, so yes, we're on day number 15 and I'm really pleased with this one. I thought it went really well and uh, it was really good fun whilst I was doing it. You know, sometimes you get those sculpts and you're just uh, sculpting away and you're enjoying every brush stroke, it feels like. And there was times where I was thinking, this is going so well, it's gonna go wrong in a second. So I was always panicking and over-saving, but that's no bad thing, I think. Uh, do save your work regularly. Uh, that's what I always say to my students, but then there's always one who says, oh, is there any way to recover my work? <laughs> anyway, uh, so I started off with the base mesh I used for another two now uh, because I want to work on the details a bit now rather than just uh, working on base meshes and getting the female form uh, although not that I'm thinking that I'm uh, brilliant at that and don't need to ever revisit it again I just want to work on details uh, so uh, aspects like uh, clothing a little bit but more uh, just those sort of sharper details that make uh, to, to go from sort of uh, basic sculpts to good sculpts and then beyond if you can. Um, I don't think I'm going to the beyond uh, section yet um, but I'm going to that good sculpt I hope um, because I think the beyond section you get sort of um, pores or really nice clothing, crisp clean lines and unfortunately I don't feel like the crisp clean line aspect is very easy in Blender at the moment. It may be my graphics card, my computer, uh, they just can't quite handle it. And throughout this sculpt, uh, the, the struggle, uh, the sort of internal struggle I had was when do I change? When do I go uh, to, from symmetry to asymmetry? Uh, so when do I rig the pose? So I thought I'd go a fair bit of detail before actually rigging and it was sluggish. My computer got a bit, um, it, it didn't like it basically. It wasn't too bad because I just decimated the model and then uh, rigged again. Um, but the first time it was, uh, what was it? it wasn't a million faces, it was 500,000 faces and trying to attach that to a rig, it wasn't happy. So it's nice to learn these things and figure out how far you can go, um, always keeping an eye on your poly count. But 500 faces gives you a pretty good amount of detail, perhaps not in the face so much, but you could add more detail to the face if you wanted to, um, rather than the rest of it. I, I use constant detail a lot to try and keep a real tab on uh, where I am and the poly count, especially as I want to pose these models. Uh, so uh, keeping a constant detail is good, but you can obviously change your constant detail depending on which area you're working on. So when I worked on the face, I put it up a bit and other areas I put it back down. And uh, I think I'm happy with that type of workflow. Um, I'm starting to finally uh, develop a workflow that's working for me. And in this case, it, it, it worked out. Um, I was really comfortable and then when I posed the model there wasn't that much to do afterwards uh, just a bit of tidying up because I didn't want to weight paint that might have taken too long and it's not always that successful um, you still get pinching and uh, pulling and things so you might as well just adapt your sculpt slightly uh, so um, that's what I did uh, did the rigging and all that sort of thing and uh, and it, it I, I enjoyed the pose aspect which is um, one of my focuses uh, this year is really uh, working on posing models and it just makes them look more exciting and um, it just yeah appealing uh, when they're in that T pose they're very dull really and very symmetrical and that uh, can get a bit dull uh, yeah uh, so uh, you'll probably see a couple of pauses every now and again because um, I it, it's a tough one with um, hybrid was the topic and I chose a um, lioness lady um, I suppose Lion, I sort of had Tiger in my head, uh, but then I was looking at Lion references. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, some sort of cat lady, cat woman, there we go. Um, so uh, this, I can't remember what I was saying now, I've just gone off on one, um, but <laughs> uh, where was I? Yeah, oh, the references, that's it. Uh, it was tough to find references of course uh, and usually I suppose you'd have a concept artist doing this sort of thing and you'd be next in the pipeline, you'd take that concept art or maybe you'd do the concept art if you're that way inclined. Uh, I, I like being every aspect of the pipeline even though I'm not anywhere near good enough um, but I like doing uh, the concept art and then I like doing the animation and all this sort of stuff uh, and I, it's, it's kind of silly really because I think you are better off specialising in one area and I suppose my area is sculpting. Um, 
but it is good to have um, a knowledge of the other areas but uh, mastering one area I think is important in this day and age uh, if you want to get a job in a big production company in my opinion anyway I haven't had a job in a big production company so I don't know uh, but uh, from what I hear uh, all the sort of research that I do and when I'm listening to interviews the blender guru interviews that he does um, they're very interesting uh, and it's really great to hear what the artists have to say about working in the, in the industry and uh, what it takes what you need to do and all that sort of stuff anyway you can see some of the finer details that I'm doing here so I'm sort of smartening up and doing uh, the kneecap and the elbow and all those sort of things and looking at quick and easy ways of doing that because when you study um, anatomy and you look at a really good reference it's actually hard to break that down but then you study how other artists have done it and you think ah it's actually quite simple the way they've done it but it looks really effective so um, it's it's kind of naughty I feel like I'm being naughty because I feel like I'm copying those artist techniques but it's just techniques uh, to get things looking right uh, in the simplest and quickest way uh, so yes uh, but uh, yeah finding reference images get back to that uh, is obviously going to be quite a tough one um, because uh, it's it's a new shape it's a new um, creature but also it's a human being so we're used to looking at it and we're used to it if it if it doesn't look right so uh, getting that right and getting that hybridness working was quite tough getting the sizes like the the paws I mean how big is a human cat lady's paw uh, is really quite tough because in cats they're quite small compared to the rest of the body but our hands are quite big in comparison so I sort of went somewhere in between and the feet uh, went a bit bigger uh, and I think it all worked in the end but there was a lot of pulling and pushing around I also wanted to work on my uh, detailed, more detailed aspects of the female anatomy, so I needed uh, quite a lot of reference images, so you will see a few pauses every now and again uh, where I'm looking those uh, reference images up and looking for more reference images of those particular points. Uh, it is it's handy having one of these, but I haven't got a woman one, uh, so I need a woman one really. Uh, that would help. They are really good because you can just quickly see the structure uh, of the shape without having to get 2D images from different angles all over the place. However, uh, it is nice to look at other the way other artists do it, like I've said, uh, to get sort of tips about how you can make a complex shape look simple. Uh, so that's what I was doing a lot of. Looking at other people's work today uh, was quite important. Although this is uh, a bit yesterday, a bit today. Uh, so I'm getting uh, ahead I've got uh, another half of what are we we're at one o'clock well quarter past and so I'm gonna work on the next sculpt uh, for the second half of the day uh, once I've uploaded this the sculpt in total took me I think it was around four hours um, the it said uh, because I obviously I capture what I'm uh, doing on the screen uh, so screen capture and that tells me how long it is and that came out to three hours but I didn't uh, record any of the EV stuff or the baking and the baking was a problem I had the same glitch and I think it's instant mesh that's causing the problem uh, for some reason when I go out to instant mesh which I really like because it brings back your model in quads uh, but uh, Blender doesn't like it Blender 2.8 specifically doesn't like it for some reason and it's hard to work out what that is uh, and I was really trying hard so what I did to fix it and I found a fix was I exported it because it's an OBJ, I uh, brought it back in and then re-exported it as an FBX and then brought it back in and it was working. Uh, so I'm quite happy that I figured that out because that was causing me lots of problems. I had to bake the ambient occlusion three times and that takes about five minutes each time. It was quite frustrating. And I don't understand why it takes so long to bake because all the other maps bake quite quickly. Normal maps bake in a minute, uh, if that. Uh, yeah, less than that even, about 10 seconds really. Uh, so uh, I don't understand why the cavity takes so long. It might be that it's doing some sort of sampling there. I suppose it must be, mustn't it? Uh, there's me trying to uh, work it out in my head now. That's a pointless idea. Someone will probably tell me why it takes so long. Uh, and it, thank you for all the support uh, and all the uh, comments that are really, uh, really helpful. 
so many times someone comes up with a solution, even if it's just uh, what the word for those nobles on trees are, and it's a canker. It's not a cankle, it's a canker. Uh, so thank you to those people. Twice I've been told that now, but that's, uh, it's nice, to, nice that you've, I've got a community out there who's answering these questions and just responding in, uh, in this way so I can find out and improve my knowledge of these things, but also improve my knowledge of Blender because uh, people say, oh, have you tried this, have you tried that? And then I can try it and it works. Although someone told me about um, X mirroring on the Rigify, it worked one day and then didn't work the next. I don't know whether that's a daily build issue, but uh, there is a mirror option in edit mode under the tool settings, because now we've got a workspace settings. In Blender 2.8, you have a workspace area. It's at where all the tools are, but it's right at the top and it's got a couple of uh, spanners, as I call them, wrenches, uh, if you're American. Um, so uh, yeah, look out for the workspace uh, settings uh, there, and that will give you a few more options for tools and that's where the X mirror was. So you can see I've gone a fair bit of detail now and I still haven't uh, rigged my model which I was sort of getting a bit fearful. I was thinking what if I can't rig it and then I thought well it's not too bad because the decimate modifier does quite a nice uh, job at retaining your detail because and that's the good thing about it over instant mesh. Instant mesh will give a nice even topology uh, which is good especially when you're sort of rigging or texturing, but in um, uh, Decimate, will, uh, where the fine areas are, it will give you more faces. So it tries to retain the detail as much as possible. So it's quite a good thing. Obviously there's things like uh, remesh in um, uh, the sculpt mode, but that is really not working in 2.8 for me anyway. And um, it crashes every time I press remesh, even if it's quite a low poly. So I put it on constant detail of 10 or something and it'll crash. Uh, so I think it's just not working at the moment. There's still quite a lot for them to sort out. I'm, I'm sort of worried that Blender 2.8 may never get released because uh, you see all these all these bugs uh, and there's so much, you realize how much of a job it is. And it is, it's quite special, it really is exciting. I'm very much looking forward to the final release that is stable. Uh, if if it ever will be, you never know really, do you? Because uh, it's it's really pushes uh, the limitations of your computer and uh, software engineer, engineering and things. So uh, I think they're doing a fantastic job, but there's a long way to go. Uh, so hopefully it will come out soon. I'm sure they're working very hard. Yeah, so big thanks to that team who uh, will probably not watch this video, but uh, I'm sure you can uh, thank them in your own way. You can support them as well. Go to the Blender, uh, well, just go to the Blender site and you can uh, support them on there and give them some money. Uh, donations. Anyway, uh, so uh, still working, still working on the detail, uh, just a bit of the cloths and things. I did actually want to have, I didn't really want this sort of uh, bikini clad uh, model um, uh, because I, I feel like I feel bad really because uh, there was me doing a, a flexing one the other day with the posing pouch and thinking well this just feels weird but it doesn't feel weird when I'm doing a bikini clad um, cat lady which just seems silly and that says something about our culture and how we um, dress women in games and so forth um, and uh, I know women are much better to look at than men so I can appreciate that certainly um, but um, I I try not to do that too much uh, just because I feel bad about it. Uh, so <laughs> so um, I tried, uh, well I, I wanted to put some sort of cloth, um, sort of draping cloth around her uh, nether regions. Uh, so uh, I never got around to it unfortunately. Uh, so it is a bit more bikini clad. Maybe we'll get more hits, <laughs> bikini clad Catwoman. I don't know, there's, uh, what is it, uh, furries aren't they? Um, people who uh, find uh, these um, cats, women and uh, creatures sexy and they dress up in these suits. Oh, I'm starting to ramble and I'm going off on a really strange tangent. But furries, look them up. Well, don't look them up actually. It's not It's not a good idea. <laughs> but I remember there was a CSI I watched and I, there was furries on there and they were, yeah, they'd committed a crime but no one could tell who it was because they're all in those funny costumes. Because they actually dress up in uh, cat and dog costumes and sort, sort of things for sexual gratification. Anyway, back to the sculpt. Uh, here I am uh, rigging uh, the posing the model. Uh, I, I'm trying not to ramble, but uh, people say they like my rambling. I'm, I don't know. I don't know that anybody could possibly like it. I suppose it's uh, how I am. It's just who I am. Uh, I do ramble like this. I try not to too much because 
it's not so much of a learning experience, but maybe it's entertaining. Maybe it's entertaining for you to see me bumbling through this. Anyway, posing the model, posing the model. Uh, this was fun as well. Uh, I was thinking, this is exciting. I'm really enjoying this. I had this pose in my head for a while because I saw uh, someone's concept art and they were running in this sort of dynamic angle. And I thought, oh, I want to do that um, for my next model. Uh, so I was quite excited. It took me a while to get the pose right. Then I took, uh, well, uh, I think on my fourth attempt at the moment. Um, and I was thinking about doing some more poses uh, to test them out and see what this uh, cat lady might look like. And I might even revisit this model actually because I'd like to paint it and retopologize it uh, because I, I feel like it's really working um, and I'm really pleased with it. Uh, so it'd be nice if it was uh, fully textured and uh, fully rigged and things. And maybe I'll uh, do some animation with it uh, for animation. Um, I don't know why it doesn't have to be said like animation, uh, but uh, hopefully animation uh, will come along in May, uh, weirdly, uh, and uh, we'll all be animating, or some of us who are watching this, maybe some are thinking, I'm not going to do that. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, I've posed the model and you can see it's not lost too much of its shape. So it's just a bit of shifting around, pushing things into position. I mean, I could have at this point uh, really upped the resolution, but that would have taken a lot longer time uh, but that's ideally what I would have done is uh, whacked up the resolution and uh, really cleaned all the lines up but you have to do twice as much work because it's not symmetrized that's why it would be nice if I could have posed it with more detail but uh, I suppose it's just one of the limitations of Blender in a sense um, I don't know whether um, apparently ZBrush, um, ZBrush is better uh, for um, poly count you can go much higher apparently with lesser machines because of their special algorithms but I don't know <coughs> excuse me I don't know what they're like for posing the models um, so uh, whether you can do that sort of thing or maybe it's probably really easy in uh, ZBrush uh, but yeah so uh, that I feel like is a limitation but it might be uh, but it's still fantastic it's a free piece of software blender and it's doing all this stuff which I think is really cool uh, so thank you to blender people uh, who've made this software it's wonderful can't remember his name the um, Dutch person uh, yeah anyway someone will tell me if you're still watching uh, it's nice to actually get comments saying yes we are still with you it's nice to think people are still watching and this effort I put in uh, all the way through is it's kind of worthwhile uh, that people are listening and some people are sculpting while listening so I'll encourage you by saying carry on keep sculpting uh, keep creative uh, have fun enjoy yourself all those things that is the main thing you you've got to enjoy what you're doing uh, and it, it feels stressful at times but you just mustn't get stressed and you just gotta keep enjoying it and if it's going wrong you don't panic you just think oh well I, I say this but uh, if it's going wrong I start panicking uh, I suppose because I'm putting it out on YouTube uh, I'm a bit more panicky because it might affect my views uh, and therefore affect my subscribers. I don't think it really will. If I had a bad sculpt, you guys wouldn't mind, would you, if I had a bad sculpt? Um, anyway, I am rambling a bit, but um, I did notice with this one, I was a little bit um, paranoid about it not working. So it's it, then I ended up doing more research to uh, compensate, and actually I needed to just get on and sculpt. Uh, and that t it's, it's a funny one that uh, sometimes it is uh, because I always say pre-production is very important but sometimes you just have to get on and do it and starting sculpting then go back to your pre-production that's actually a really good um, idea um, although I, I say that to students but I know in my head that they just don't want to do any pre-production they just want their ideas just to quickly appear on the computer and we were all like that uh, when we first started and then you think well why isn't that working and you have to go back to your reference images uh, to figure out why it's not working but sometimes you need to start in order to see what the problems are going to be in order for you to research those problems so uh, yeah just get sculpting is the key so there we have it, uh, my final piece. I'm pleased with that. I still haven't worked out what to do with these bases because the shadows don't work very well in Eevee. Uh, so the reflections are working quite nicely, uh, but then it has sort of reflections of the background and it looks a bit weird. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy with how the sculpt turned out. Uh, really uh, pleased, really pleased. Anyway, uh, so Discord server, there's a uh, rotten steak, a rotten steak, yeah, that looked horrendous, uh, but good as well. Uh, some nice work there, now, people keeping up, well done. Uh, I like this one, clever idea. Uh, what's the, I can't remember the Greek uh, 
or yeah, his Greek god who, um, oh, it's annoying me, it's, uh, it's gonna uh, annoy me <laughs> for a while now, the staff there, uh, gorilla like that, it looks like he's flexing, so that's a flex one I think. Uh, empty, empty big bank, I like that one as well, I thought that was good. Liren, well done for not going overly sexual, again, you're doing well. Uh, uh, flexing moustache this time, uh, well done. Uh, so uh, I think my favourite uh, was uh, the sandals, but I can't remember the name of the Greek god now, that's annoying, uh, I, because it's a messenger of, oh, never mind. Uh, but yeah, um, well done. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're still enjoying it. Uh, thank you for all your support and I will see you next time.